Before we leave chapter two behind, we've spent so much time looking at appropriate graphs, histograms, dot plots, and so on. But actually, graphs are where the rest of the world kind of impinges on statistics, and they usually do a horrible job. So we want you to, as a statistics student, to have, have a sense of what a bad graph looks like and what the problems are with a bad graph and why they can be misleading. So we're going to spend one section, a brief section, looking at the ways graphs can misrepresent data. All right, so good graphs avoid the following. <laughs> Do not have the following in a good, in a good graph. Um, these are actually examples from a book called Weaponized Lies by Daniel Levitin, which is a very good book. I'm a nerd. I like reading those kind of books. All right, so this one was gross sales excluding Kickstarter. And you'll notice there's no access to it. See, where's the label? What are we looking at? Is it millions? Is it hundreds of thousands? Who knows, <laughs> right? We don't know. It's, it's unlabeled. Then this one was a really good one. Um, I found this one online. This is a truncated vertical axis. Look at what happens. It's from 34 to 42. See that right there? So it's cut off right down at the bottom, right? It's particularly right there it's cut off. It doesn't go down to zero. Now, a truncated vertical axis is acceptable if you're trying to show um, a difference, right? Trying to illuminate a small value. So in limited circumstances, you can do these, but in general, you should avoid them unless there's a really good reason for um, having a political axe to ground not be that reason. So having that truncated, having it cut off, that's what that means to cut off, to truncate, right? So having that truncated vertical axis might not be good unless there's a valid reason for why you need to do it. All right, discontinuity in the horizontal or vertical axis. So, so um, for example, this particular one went from 2005, 2010, 2015. And what they do is they have this little marker at the front to show that it was kind of truncated on the horizontal axis. So they just kind of skipped over stuff. So if you see that little sign, that means they skipped over data. Now again, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but you want to note that. Um, and generally, you don't want to skip values unless there's a valid reason why. Right? So avoid it unless there's a valid reason. <laughs> right? So discontinuity, right? skipping, right? just kind of hopping around is not a good thing. And then um, this one I actually see from students. They'll choose an inappropriate vertical or horizontal scale. So if the graph is right here. What in the world is all of this doing here? You don't need to see that because there's no data over here and there's no data over here. So make your scale appropriate. Scale being the tick marks on your axes. So make that scale appropriate to make the graph appropriate, right? So choose an appropriate scale. This is inappropriate right here, having all this extra white space on the left and the right for no good reason. Mm -mm -mm. Now, if you're interested, there is a, a meme-based.cheeseburger.com um, graph jam, and there are lots of funny graphs there. And then um, ugly graphs, data is ugly. Um, those are pretty fun. So I sometimes find terrible graphs on that website um, just to pull on exams and things like that. So now, Another one that kind of showed up um, in the last 10 years or so is the double y-axis. This is actually a notorious graph um, used by a congressman to talk about Planned Parenthood. And so you'll notice that's 327,000. That's 935,000. Why is this lower than that? Hmm? Right? So this actually won the award for Boston Globe in 2015 as the worst graph <laughs> of the year. So um, because they're trying to make a point, but you can't have this be 900,000 be less than this, which is 300,000. That makes no sense. The actual graph looks like this, right? Here's the, it was 280 some thousand, 289,000. So 289,000, these are abortions in 2006 to 327,000. So if I take that abortion line right here, right here, and it's this line right here. It's basically horizontal. I mean, it's got a little rise to it from 289 to 327 because the numbers are correct on the graph. And then the cancer screenings and preventative services went from 2.8 million down to 935,000, but that looks like this. 
this one on the right is the more accurate graph, right? So it's a better use of double y axis. So you have two graphs, right? Two y axes, but you're putting them together and you have values shown and all of that good stuff. Isn't that nice? All right. So what are some guidelines for making good graphs then? What are some things we want to see when we look at a graph? So you want to see a title and labels, right? You want everything to be clearly labeled with explanations if necessary so that you know what you're looking at. You want to include levels of, excuse me, units of measurement um, from a data source where appropriate, like inches, feet, dollars, right? You want to avoid distortion. You don't want to lie or exaggerate your data. Now I say that knowing that is what a lot of people use graphs for, but um, that's what you want to avoid in a good graph, right? So a good graph would avoid distortion. A good graph will be la labeled and titled correctly. A good graph will minimize the amount of white space in the graph. So think of this one right here with all this white space for no reason. That's what they're talking about. So you're not going to have tons of extra white space just floating around the graph. Right? If you truncate your scales, you clearly indicate that. And you do that with this little symbol-y thing, right, where you kind of make a jagged um, line. So if you do truncate to avoid, say, unnecessary white space, then you let people know that you did that right there. So the little symbol to indicate that is like a, like that along the axes. So you can do that on the horizontal axis or you can do it on the vertical axis, right? Something along those lines. You want to avoid clutter, not having excessive grid lines. So you can see down here, I didn't, I don't have horizontal and vertical and all of that jazz. It's not, it's not a algebra graph with like a grid system. <laughs> so you just have some grid lines, enough that you can explain what's going on, but not so much that you have, um, distract everybody, right? Don't distract your reader with all your grid lines. Avoid three dimensions. Oh, I cannot tell you how many times I see this. I see people doing three dimensional pie charts. Just because Microsoft Word will do it for you or Excel doesn't mean that you should be doing it, right? Um, those programs actually make horrible graphs that should not be made, including three dimensional pie charts, three dimensional bar charts. Don't use them, right? Even though they're, they're available in the menu, do not. Um, do not use more than one design in the same graphic. I see that a lot. So they'll use different designs and all of that. So let the data speak for themselves. You don't have to force the reader to a specific part. So that would be sort of like having all these bars be rectangles, except for this one bar be a circle or something like that to show people. You don't want to do that. And then last, but you want to avoid relative graphs that are devoid of scale, which is pretty much um, the top two graphs on the previous page. So you don't want to have unlabeled axes with no scale, no tick marks, no labels. That's not good. And that's what they're talking about. Now you'll notice here, I actually received these graphs from students from a project. Um, this was several years ago. They're horrible. <laughs> They're both terrible. Um, and you should never turn something like this into an instructor. So for example, look at these data. I mean, it's just awful. And then this, see that horizontal axis? It's labeled with one. That's it, just one. <laughs> it's just it's just horrendous. So for both of these graphs, there's way too many categories. Um, the categories are not labeled. And the categories that do exist well, that's just terrible. Like both of these legends are awful. And what the heck does this mean? We don't know. So <laughs> for both of these graphs, we can say there's way too many categories. Remember we said when we make a table, we want about five to 20, if we can manage it. We want between, well, let me, I'll say we want between five and 20, and this is not good. Um, this might be 20, but boy, is it atrocious. So there's way too many categories. Um, the categories are not labeled. And yes, there's this legend, but it's just awful, right? So the categories are not labeled. Remember in a pie chart, they should actually have percents and labels, right? There should be a label and a percent with it. And you don't have room for it anyway, because you have too many of them. Um, there's so many things wrong with these graphs. This is just a few of the things I'm picking up on. Um, and the legends, 
are atrocious. I mean, look at that. Look at all those decimals. No, 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 no. That's the legend, remember, is the list. It's the way to read the graph. So the categories are labeled inappropriately. The legends are terrible. Legends being these lists over here with the categories. And that's just the tip of the iceberg with these graphs. These, these are horrible graphs. Um, never, never turn in something like this or use it in a presentation. It's just not appropriate. Um, you need to have everything labeled clearly. You need to have appropriate categories and you need to have appropriate scaling. This is, this is full of clutter. I mean, if I look at the list above, it, it doesn't have three dimensions. They're both flat, but boy, is it cluttered. Um, boy, is it not using, um, it's, it's just distracting the reader and it's just awful. So let's just say avoid clutter. And both of these graphs are very cluttered. All right, last but not least, keeping that list in mind of what we want, I actually found these graphs on a journalism professor's website, if you're interested, if, if they haven't taken it down by now because they realize that I um, disagree with them fundamentally about what they think should make a good graph. These are graphs on that professor's website for um, journalism students that are being touted as good graphs, what graphs should look like. To which I say, no, 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 no. These are horrible graphs. So let me just say right off the bat, these are bad graphs that should not be taught by to anyone <laughs> as good. Never. All right, so let's start with this one. I guess it's a pie chart, but it's three-dimensional. So you have that, that issue of tilt that's taking place. So um, the perspective is off and it's just weird. So um, this is three dimensional. So why is this bad? It's three dimensional. So there's perspective problems. Perspective is, you know, what it looks like when you look at a picture and that kind of thing. So perspective problems, right? These are the ways it's bad, by the way. So it's 3D. No, 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 no. It's cluttered. I mean, look at the all the writing and stuff like that. So it's cluttered and the lettuce and all of that. Um, it has pictures. Pictures are not good, right? It has a picture of something. Boo, right? All of this is just boo. We, we don't like any of this. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but it would be good to use a boring pie circle, using a boring two-dimensional flat pie circle or pie chart. That's what you should use. This trying to jazz it up by making it look like a hamburger or something like that is not appropriate. So all of these things are boo, things that make it bad. All right, what about this particular graph? These are the weekly U.S. retail gasoline prices for regular grade for, what is it, 2003 through 2005. It's not actually that bad. The problem is that they're not noting that they've truncated the y-axis. Now this is an example of something where you might want to truncate the y-axis. It might be appropriate for the sake of an economic condition like this, like dollars per gallon to truncate. But the problem is that you have to note it. So I'll just make a note right there. So the what's bad about it is that the axis, the y-axis was truncated, but not noted. It's okay to truncate, um, actually it happens in economics a lot, Right. If again, truncate just means cut off, right? So they didn't go all the way down to zero. So they only went to 1.2. So the y-axis was truncated, but it wasn't noted. If you're going to truncate, if you have a valid reason, say, you know, for economic reasons, um, you're in an economics class and there's a good reason to truncate, then you have to at least note it somewhere on the graph with the little jazz or little zazzy thing like that. <laughs> you have to note it somewhere that you've cut it off and then put 1.2 here. But you're not noticing that, right? You're not noting that on the graph and that's not good. So you want that little, you know, marker on there. And then the last one's just, no, just no. <laughs> I get it's funny. Um, these are the different candy bar charts. I don't know what the vertical axes are. Like, what are the numbers here? 
Um, I noticed that bars are wider than other bars. That's not appropriate. Remember, histogram bars should all be the same width. Uh, I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> we should not be using pictures ever. No pictures. All right, so what's bad about this one? Oh, so much bad. <laughs> There's nothing good on this one. So um, bad, 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 bad. So what's the, what's the vertical axis? What's going on over here? We don't know what the numbers are on the vertical axis. We don't know what this is standing for at all. So the numbers on the vertical axis are missing. Uh, let's see what else. Pictures, pictures are always bad, right? You never want pictures. Boo, right? You don't want pictures <laughs> on your graphs. That's not good. Um, some bars are wider than others. So bars are not equal width. If you were going to make this graph again, what you should do would be a boring bar chart. where all the, these are rectangles that are all equal width. That's what you should have. So I guess instead of good, I should say should do instead. <laughs> of what this graph is.